Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. A court rules the national motto, In God We Trust, is okay on American money. A federal judge rules atheists cannot force clergy members to pay extra taxes. And a bishop says demonic powers inside some atheists hate the name of Jesus. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Christiannews.net reports that atheist complainers lost another lawsuit. This time, they were trying to get the words, in God we trust, removed from our money. But they failed, because America's motto, in God we trust, is totally constitutional, according to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in New York one step below the U.S. Supreme Court. The Federal Appeals Court ruled against a prominent atheist in his quest to remove the motto in God we trust from American courtesy. Atheist Michael Newdow, who had filed numerous complaints challenging the mixture of God and government, submitted a complaint starting in the Southern District of New York back in March of 2013, complaining that the motto somehow violated the Establishment Clause of the U.S. Constitution because the government, he believed, ought to establish atheism as the official state religion. But the court disagreed. Those named in the lawsuit uh, included seven children and their parents, along with a group in New York City, uh, atheists, remarked that they do not like being forced to look at the name of God on their currency every time they make a purchase. They contended that somehow makes them feel uncomfortable inside and feels them, makes them feel rejected by society because they have, in fact, rejected the creator who made our society and made America great. So the Judge, back in 2013, disagreed with Newdow and ruled the Constitution does not require we delete God from our money. Here's a quote from Judge Harold Bayer, who was the lower court judge who ruled as such. He says, the Supreme Court has repeatedly assumed the motto, in God we trust, has a secular purpose and effect. And all circuit courts that have considered this issue, namely the Ninth Circuit, Fifth, 10th and DC Circuit have all found no constitutional violation in the motto's inclusion on our currency. The plaintiffs, the atheist complainers, may be inconvenienced or offended by the appearance of the motto on currency, but these burdens are a far cry from the coercion, penalty, or denial of benefit required under the substantial burden standard in case law. So in other words, yes, they're easily offended, but that burden is not substantial. They have to have a substantial burden. They're not denied access to buy anything. They can still use the money, even if they don't like it. Well, here's a quote now from the Christian attorney, Rory Gray, who works with Alliance Defending Freedom, celebrating this victory at the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. He defended the motto, In God We Trust, and he said this, Americans need not be forced to abandon their religious heritage simply to appease someone's animosity toward anything that references God. The Second Circuit rightly reached the same conclusion because this suit was based on the atheist complainer's deeply flawed understanding of the First Amendment. Well, thank God for that victory, right? And our thanks to uh, I think it was Associated Press, no, ChristianNews.net, who gave us that excellent report. And thank God for the work of the Christian attorneys at Alliance Defending Freedom. I do discern the Holy Spirit of God upon those Christian attorneys who are out there fighting for your religious freedom, fighting for America's right to recognize our Creator, as was named in our founding documents. Even the Constitution was signed in the year of our Lord, right? 
Even the Declaration of Independence said that our rights come from the Creator, right? So America is a blessed nation, but let's take a moment to discern the spirits. What is this thing inside of the atheist complainer? That every time he looks at money and he sees the word God, he cringes a little bit inside. Maybe he uh, feels discomfort. What is that thing manifesting inside of him? I say it's a demonic spirit. And the easiest way for him to become comfortable when he looks at our money and sees in God we trust is to give his life to Christ. To get rid of the demonic spirit that's making him uncomfortable. It's not us who's making him uncomfortable. It's something inside of him. It's the evil spirit inside of him that is making him want to wretch every time he sees the word God because the devil himself hates God. So, what does the Bible say? The Bible says this in Psalm 33, and let's pray this together. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name. And we worship you, and we thank you for this courtroom victory. In God we trust is not just our national motto, it is in our very spirit, in our very soul. We do trust you, God. And we declare from Psalm 33, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. And Father, you chose us to be your inheritance, and we choose you to be our God. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, atheists lose another lawsuit, this time to tax clergy. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about defending religious liberty? I know you do. And that's why I'm asking you to take action today. Don't just sit there, but do something. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org and sign a petition that we'll fax to Congress on your behalf. In fact, there are three specific petitions I want you to sign to defend military chaplains who are under fire. The first is to support H.R. 343. This is a bill introduced in Congress by my friend, Congressman Walter Jones of North Carolina, to protect free speech for military chaplains who are sometimes punished if they use the word Jesus in their prayers. Well, if you know my story, you know that I was punished in 2006, uh, even at court martial, because I used the word Jesus in my prayers in uniform in front of the White House. Well, I was later vindicated by Congress who said it's okay for me to do that. But did you know 65 other chaplains are now suing the Navy? I was not the only person. Our second petition I want you to sign is to protect military chapel buildings, which are being desecrated. Christian altars, Catholic or Protestant, are being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies in all 50 states under this order by the Obama, Obama administration. Well, that deprives all of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of a sacred worship space, which ought to be protected. And instead, they're gonna punish the chaplain if he won't turn over the keys to his chapel. Here's another petition I want you to sign, and this is to stop threatening court martial for troops who talk about Jesus. Even recently, the Pentagon is saying, oh, we're gonna threaten you with a crime of proselytizing. No, that's not right. Any soldier ought to be able to talk about his or her faith in Jesus Christ and to have that same religious freedom of speech that we sacrifice to give for others. When you sign these petitions, we will fax them to Congress and it's free. I want you to take action today. Sign these three important petitions at PrayInJesusName.org. Go there today. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name and thank you again for watching PIJN News. ChristianNews.net reports that atheist complainers lost yet another lawsuit this week in Kentucky where they tried to claim that churches and clergy ought to be double taxed and lose their religious tax exemption. But the court said no, that the separation of church and state actually requires that churches and clergy members should not be taxed beyond their normal income taxes, which every clergy member has to pay as an employee of their church. But the federal judge in Kentucky dismissed the athe atheist complainer's lawsuit that wanted to make the clergy pay extra taxes for their parsonage. U.S. District Court William O. Bartelsman, appointed by then President Jimmy Carter, so this is a Democrat appointed judge who actually sided with the Christians and threw out the lawsuit that was lodged by American atheists, atheists of Northern Indiana, and atheist archives of Kentucky, declaring that they had no standing to complain because they were not harmed. 
The groups had asserted that current tax law, which exempts Christian churches from requesting tax exempt status, filing an annual form 990 or paying income tax withholding and FICA charges, along with other benefits, is unconstitutional. Religious organizations and churches are treated differently from secular organizations, they complained, and they wrote this in an outline of the lawsuit last year. But the judge, Bartleman, said that the atheist group lacked standing to bring the lawsuit because they personally suffered no injury from the regulations and were never denied the same benefits that they were challenging. In other words, atheist members can also become clergy, can also have a parsonage, can also file for the same tax exemptions that are given to churches. He pointed to circumstances where atheist groups were granted the same benefits allotted to churches, but in this case, the atheist complainers never tried to get their tax exempt benefits. So uh, here's a quote from the judge. He said the IRS cites to a number of cases where state and federal law have recognized non-theist organizations, or in other words, atheist groups, as tax exempt organizations. And they are religious organizations, even if they don't believe in God. Here he said the statutes and regulations pertaining to tax exempt organizations do not expressly favor certain churches or certain religious organizations. In other words, you're not getting favoritism just because you happen to be Christian, nor do they express favor, expressly favor theist or God-believing organizations over atheist or non-theist organizations. As the atheists have never sought classification as a church or a religious organization under section 501c3 of the IRS code, their assertion that the IRS targets the atheist beliefs for disfavored treatment is unfounded. So in other words, again, the atheist complainers never tried to become a church, never tried to get their tax benefits, and so they can't complain that the Christians are exercising their rights and actually filling out the paperwork to become tax exempt organizations. So thank God for that First Amendment victory and our thanks to uh, christiannews.net for that important report. You know, this reminds us of a case last year that was won by the atheist groups in Wisconsin, right? The Freedom From Religion Foundation and Annie Gaylor, as I recall, filed a lawsuit saying, oh, but we're atheists and we don't want the church to have religious exemptions. And in fact, the atheists in Wisconsin won that lawsuit because they got a bad ruling from this judge, liberal judge, also a Democrat appointee, Barbara Crabb. What a great name for this judge. <laughs> she wrote against a clergy exemption saying that uh, it provides a benefit to religious persons and nobody else, even though doing so is not necessary to alleviate a special burden on religious exercise. So this judge, Barbara Crabb, voted to tax the clergy members extra, and last year, the Freedom From Religion Foundation challenged a nearly 60-year-old law that gave pastors an exemption for their housing allowance. That judge was also appointed by Jimmy Carter, uh, said that section two of the federal tax code is somehow unconstitutional, even though it's been the law of the land for decades, and that bad ruling is, thank God, now going to be appealed to the Seventh Circuit, and that bad ruling was also quoted by this Kentucky judge, Bartlesman, who rejected her reasoning in this decision. Let's talk for a moment, and our thanks again to christiannews.net, let's talk for a moment about the clergy tax exemption. First of all, Christians already pay their taxes. They pay income taxes. Everyone who goes to church and has a job already paid their taxes back home on their income. And then they gave whatever was left over to the church. So should the church then have to pay taxes on top of that when the church is giving it away to the poor and you know having soup kitchens and uh, bread pantries and uh, parsonage? See, in the old days, the church used to sit on the same land as the parsonage. Here's a picture of a church with a little shack next to it, right? Uh, that is also known as the parsonage where the pastor lives. And it used to be that they were all on church property, the same little corner lot that housed the church also housed the parsonage. Well, 
In modern times, most churches don't have these little buildings next to them where the pastor lives. Some of them still do, but a lot of pastors like to rent their own space or uh, buy their own house. Maybe it's a mile away from the church. And because that is still funded by the church, it should not be double taxed since the pastor already paid his income taxes as an employee of the church. Most churches uh, pay their pastor a modest salary and the pastor already pays his income tax because he is an employee. But that doesn't mean he ought to pay extra uh, taxes for the simple fact of living in a church owned or church rented property. Jesus talked about this in Matthew chapter 22. And Jesus said this, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and render to God the things that are God's. In other words, Jesus advocating paying just enough taxes, but not too many taxes, and paying your tithe to God, giving to church, but not uh, giving beyond what God requires. God encourages us to give 10% in the Bible. So when you've paid your taxes, when you've paid your tithes, the rest you ought to have free access to take care of your family. And I think it's a good thing and I'm thankful that this Kentucky judge ruled the right way. Would you pray with me? Let's take a moment and pray. Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name for, uh, we praise you for your victory that now in these top two stories, the atheist complainers have been struck down by the courts and we still live in a land, America, that is founded by God, that has God at its heart and soul. Father, I pray that our laws will continue to be upheld, that we will continue to be a nation that upholds and honors Almighty God with our laws. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's take a short break. When we come back, the demons are out, right? An exciting quote from a bishop, a friend of mine, E.W. Jackson, says that atheist complainers may be manifesting a demonic spirit. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital, Dr. Chaps will be right back. As a Christian minister, I believe the Bible and I believe in spiritual gifts. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 that the gift of discerning of spirits is available to you. The ability to see angels or demons or the Holy Spirit. In fact, I've written two amazing books that I want you to have today. And you can visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org to get either one of these resources. The first is my PhD dissertation on this particular topic. It's called How to See the Holy Spirit and Angels and Demons. Ignatius of Loyola on the Gift of Discerning of Spirits in Church Ethics. If you want an exciting theology book that's challenging and intellectual, that goes into the classic theology of Ignatius of Loyola, how he was influenced by men like John Cashin and Thomas Akempis, how he influenced later theologians like Carl Rahner and Timothy Gallagher, then you will love this resource, maybe for your pastor, or if you're a counselor, or a serious Bible student, this is a theology book and you're gonna love it. Or maybe you want something more fun. I've also written a different book, which is more of a popular book. Uh, it's called The Demons of Barack Obama, and it applies my theology of discerning of spirits to the 44th president of the United States. I used an article written by my friend David Barton on 50 events in his presidency, and I tried to discover, is he being influenced by the Holy Spirit, or by angels, or by maybe some other spirits? What is behind the president? So if you want a popular book that's fun to read, it's available for $20, or if you want an academic book that could be used for serious Bible students, it's available for $35, or maybe you want both of these, they're both available for $50, a donation of any amount, will go towards sending these books to you. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and get both of these resources for your family. Welcome back and thank you for watching PIJN News. I'm Dr. Chaps. CNSNews.com reports a Christian bishop in Virginia said last week that efforts to stop Christians from praying publicly in Jesus' name are demonic because there is power in the name of Jesus and Satan is ruling inside of some atheist complainers. Speaking last week at a pastor's retreat, Bishop E.W. Jackson, a personal friend of mine, said these words at the Family Research Council's Watchmen on the Wall conference in Washington, D.C. 
let's watch a short video clip from Bishop E.W. Jackson, very inspiring speech that he gave in Washington. Dr. King said, a Christian who does not pray is like a human being who does not breathe. We have got to pray because we know that prayer is power. And my friends, that's why I tell you this is not politics. Because when the Foundation for Freedom from Religion and the ACLU goes around the country trying to stop prayer in city council meetings and school board meetings, trying to stop prayer in every public event, they are not simply human beings who disagree with us. It is demonic power moving to shut down the power of God that comes through prayer. That's why they don't want us to pray in the name of Jesus, because there is power in the name of Jesus. For there is none other name given unto heaven among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. And the demonic forces know that one day every eye will behold him, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen, Bishop E.W. I tell you what, this man is right on target. Bishop E.W. Jackson, my friend again from Virginia, uh, who is an ordained minister and retired lawyer, actually a Harvard Law School graduate, encouraged his colleagues to pray at the conference, which is designed to encourage leaders in the Christian church to be educated on current events and to promote Christian values in the public square. He is the head pastor at Exodus Faith Ministries in Chesapeake, Virginia, and last year he was GOP nominee for Lieutenant Governor of Virginia. I love the way he opened that quote, and here's, again, uh, a paraphrase of what he said. Uh, Dr. King said, a Christian prayer, a Christian that does not pray is like a human being that does not breathe. We've all got to pray because we know that prayer is power. And my friends, that's why I tell you this is not politics. So again, our thanks to uh, CNS News for that report. You know, let's take a moment and discern the spirits. Here, uh, there's some atheist complainers and we've been talking about them in this show and they don't think that they're full of the devil. They don't think there's something inside of them. Oh, these are just our own human choices that we wanna make. But I respectfully disagree. Uh, here's a graphic or artist conception of what a demon might look like. But really, uh, how would they know? Because demonic spirits are invisible, how would they know if there's something inside of them because they can't see it? And I'll tell you the way they can know is because they can sense the demonic spirit tempting them to sin. You don't listen with your ears necessarily, you don't look with your eyes or smell, you don't use your five senses to discern a demonic spirit, you use your morality. And when there's a voice telling you to sin, to do what is evil, you think you ought to listen to that voice or you ought to reject it? So there is a sixth sense that we use, the discerning of spirits comes through our morality of right and wrong. And when you, you hear a voice tempting you to do what is right, you think, well, maybe that's the Holy Spirit. I should do the right thing. When you hear a spirit or you feel or you sense in some way a voice or a suggestion telling you and tempting you to do what is evil, you ought to just reject that voice as a demonic spirit and say, I'm not gonna let you rule inside of me just because they can't see it. In fact, the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 4, right? This is the reason they can't see it, because Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand the message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. So an atheist complainer, he looks at Jesus and doesn't see the glory of Christ. He's blind. And who has blinded him? Satan inside of him has blinded his eyes. It's impossible for atheists to discern the demonic spirits. And many of you out there maybe see, uh, well, I, I can't see demons and I'm telling you, there is a way to begin to discern and that's to get rid of the blindness, to get rid of all of your sin. And through holiness, when, you, when we're filled with the spirit of God, then suddenly the scales fall from our eyes and we're able to see. This is how you can begin to see and discern the spirits of God. Let's take a short break and we're gonna preview tomorrow's show. This is PIJN News. 
Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Thank you so much for supporting us here at PIJN News. Please call our toll-free prayer line today, 866-Obey-God. I would love to pray with you. I'll return your call if I can or donate at PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 8, just as you excel in everything, see also that you excel in this grace of giving. Tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about the homosexual agenda in Scotland. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.